Hi, today I'm gonna tell you how to make ornithopter fuselage, wings and tail. I'll tell you how real birds fly and then I will use all the parts to assemble a cool mechanical robot. And for those who haven't seen the first part of the video, the link in the description below. I chose a nylon fabric as a material for the wings. It is also called ripstop. It is used in sails, kites and parachutes as it is very durable and lets no air through. I don't know how many times I'll have to redo those wings and how much material I'll need for that. So I got a piece with the size of one and a half by five meters. This patch is enough for more than a pair of wings and tails. So I'm gonna use this fabric to create a membrane. This membrane will be pulled on the wing sparks. For spars I use carbon fiber rods. They're light, stiff and popular with aircraft modeling guys. I have rods with the one and a half, three and four millimeters diameter. Four meter long rods of each size should be enough. To fix the rods I will stick them to fabric with adhesive double-faced polypropylene tape. Okay, let's cut it. In order for the wings to be sized as I want them, I printed the pattern. The wing surface is a whole piece of fabric. The template came out to be pretty big, so I formed it by putting together two A1 size sheets. I printed the tail pattern and other pieces on an AO sheet. Now I can cut the fabric in one by one scale. I fix the fabric on the table so it doesn't move around and cut pieces of the required length. It is a lengthy and laborious process, but if I cut it unexactly, my ornithopter may be unable to fly. Yeah, it's done. Now I need to stick and sew them together. But how can my bird fly with such wings? Let's check it out. Bird wing has a peculiar shape. The front edge is thicker. It is where the bones are, as well as muscles and a few layers of feathers. The back of the wing is thin and elastic. In the process of flying, the vertically asymmetrical wing shape divides the airflow in two. One goes above the wing and the other goes under. So when the flows come together behind the wing, the upper one travels further and faster than the lower. The airflow pressure decreases as the speed increases, so the static airflow pressure above the wing is lower. The pressure difference defines the elevation force. For demonstration purpose, here is a sheet of paper. I blow air on the paper so that the airflow above is the faster than below. And voila! With the first or second attempt, the paper elevates with the help of elevating force. Here's how the real birds fly. Cool, eh? Of course, my iron software is going to be a lot more clunky than that. On wings, going upstroke, it falls. On wings going downstroke, it rises. Up and down, up and down. The nature has been developing birds flying concept for thousands of years. We people are far from that with our mechanical hacks and models. Let's go on. Before sewing, I need to connect rods with offcuts. I fix it with sticky tape and sew. First I apply sticky tape to the upper side of the wing and the diagonal guiding rods so that there is a space for carbon rods, wing spars. They have to be able to move freely inside that space so I can take them out. Then I turn the wings over and cut the carbon rods to match the required length. Then I attach the rods along the middle of the tape. Now I connect the wings according to the pattern. I remove the upper layer of the sticky tape and secure it. After that, I reinforce the wings in some areas, they're ready to be sewed. Now I do the same steps with the tail. Well, I can sew now. Due to the fact that I don't have any sewing machine, I will sew it in my friend's sewing workshop. Ta-da! I will start from these six strips. Pity, the sewing machine needle gets stuck in the glue on the tape. I might clean it with alcohol and go on sewing, but after that it is going into a trash can. 
as it won't do for sewing clothes anymore. Moreover, it turned out to be dispensable. Yep. It's done. So. Uh, I've sewed this six, uh, six strips and what I'll do next, I will sew up this front strips and cross strips. But before doing that, I need to put the rod inside. I did it to create a skeleton. As if I accidentally sewed the wing spar area, I'll hardly ever be able to insert anything there easily. So, now I need to close this corner and after that I will fix it with this patch. So, it's almost done and only the spine parts are left. This is the spine part. Done! Now I sew the tail in similar manner and installed the parts on the fuselage. Now for the body that will host other parts of my ornithopter. It is the biggest part of an ornithopter, so it has to be as light as possible. I cut holes for it to waste loss, so it looks like Swiss cheese. As there is no ready-made fuselage model for my ornithopter on the internet, I made it myself. The snap fit approach helped me to get rid of any bolts. It is like Lego. Every piece is held in place by the slot it is inserted in. The first prototype was made of 2mm thick acrylic resin. This material is very light and cheap in production, but very fragile as well. So the iron copter would break on the first fall. So I decided to use carbon fiber, as it is very durable. Parts made of carbon fiber may survive not only an occasional fall, but a few kilograms worth of load as well. Carbon is durable indeed, but I screwed up with the schematics. Too few holes. I couldn't afford to start over, as this material is rather expensive. Well, I settled on a glass fiber. It is both light and pretty durable. This material is widely used in aircraft modeling and easy to come across in RC stores. Well, I need to check if my model is made correctly. So it's time for a small transplant operation. Some parts require force to be pushed into place, that's fine. Most importantly, they fit. It's done. I'm ready to install the wings, but first, let us make it clear how real bird wings are laid out. If put simplistically, wings and a tail are a body that holds flight feathers and other feathers. We're going to look only at flight feathers as they make a bird fly. But birds don't get born with them. They grow them as they grow up. That's why birds can fly as soon as they are born. Flight feathers on wings are usually divided into three main types. For most birds, it is flight feathers of the first order that make one able to fly. Even removing all other feathers from their wings wouldn't make a difference in their flying capabilities, while shortening those flight feathers of the first order would completely strip them of this ability. Feathers make wing surface solid and smooth. My ornithopter doesn't incorporate different wing or feather orders, but does share a similar principle. The strain fabric acts like a membrane consisting of a firm and flexible parts. The firm part is responsible for the flapping force and the flexible part, similarly to flight feathers, is responsible for movement direction. Both wings and tail also function as ailerons, they move a bird up and down. How do ailerons work? When you are driving with a relaxed hand put out of the window, you can feel the oncoming airflow. If you put your fingers up, the airflow pulls your hand upwards. And if you direct your fingers down, the hand is pushed down. Ailerons function in a similar manner. On regular aircraft, they're installed on wings, while my ornithopter has only the tail to direct it up or down. 
Now I will install the wings on the fuselage. It is pretty straightforward with the wings. I put a bolt in the joint and tighten it. I will fix the front wing spars with 3D printed part of nylon and connect the diagonal spars to a collected assembly through micro drill chain. Ok, the wings are on the body. It is time to put them on test. For testing, I created a special stand that looks like a merry-go-round. If I put the bird on it, then when it gains some horizontal speed, the vector aimed to attach it to a circle will make the bird go round. If the wings are made wrong, then the bird will just flap in place. And if the stand rotates, the bird's gonna fly. Everything is working. That is all for today. Thank you for watching, guys. If you like the project, don't forget to subscribe. Next episode, I'm going to install the tail, assemble and program the remote, and after that, I'm going to fly, fly, and fly again. Bye-bye.